What's up, everybody? This is Jose with Oakland Latinos United, a.k.a. Oakland Latinos Unidos, on here with a new video for you guys to enjoy. Well, the video I'm going to make today is actually a remake video of an older video I did, a, like, about a year and a half ago. And that video was called The History of Latino, Chicano, Gangs and Hoods and Barrios in Oakland. And uh, this is the 2021 version. I feel that that version I did then... It was good, but I think a lot was missing. I did it a little bit sloppy. Since then, I've had a lot more pictures. I've learned a lot more things. And, uh, yeah, I think I could do a better version of it. And uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoy it. Once again, like I said, I don't condone this behavior, nor do I glorify this stuff. But this is Oakland history, and uh, I feel that... We talk about the black drug dealers and the black gangsters in Oakland, but we don't talk about the Chicano and Raza gangsters and drug dealers in Oakland. And uh, usually they're ignored. And um, me growing up in the hood and knowing a lot of people and having brothers and sisters who were involved in this stuff, knowing a lot of the players out there that I'm going to talk about, I feel that as a Chicano historian of Oakland, I feel it's up to me to tell their story. You feel me? Because nobody else is going to tell their story. And that's just how it goes. So, once again, this is the history of Chicano, Mexican, Latino, gangs, barrios, hoods in Oakland. And the timeline I'm going to talk about is between 1940 and 2010. So, let's get it started. Let's go back to the 1940s, to the Pachuco era. See, this is the era that a lot of people don't realize happened in Oakland. You know what I mean? That there were Pachuco zoot suiters in Oakland. And the gangs of Oakland, at least Chicano gangs, go back to the zoot suit era. Go that far back. Not just in L.A., but even in Oakland, the Bay Area. Now, a lot of people might know their history. There was a huge migration in the 1940s to Oakland during World War II. A lot of people came from the South, especially African Americans and, and white Southerners. Also... A lot of Chicanos came from New Mexico, Texas, from Arizona. Some came from L.A. in the Central Valley. You know what I mean? Some came from Colorado. And also a lot of Braceros from Mexico came to Oakland to work in the railroad and the shipyards. Many of the Chicanos that came were either in the military, in the Marines, or, or in, the, in the, the Army or Navy. Or they worked in the shipyards or railroads or some of the other military installations as well. And, uh, you know, this time was very a very busy time. And, you know, these youngsters that were coming out here, they had money. A lot of people came from El Paso, Texas. And the Zuzu style started in El Paso, Texas. El Chuco, that's where they say the word Pachuco came from. And, uh, yeah, man, you started seeing Zuzu Pachuco activity in Oakland. Uh, they had small versions of the Zuzu riots in Oakland where clashes with sailors and Zuzu suitors happened. Uh, there was also a lot of police raids in Oakland where, where, where um, sailors and, and, and the police, not sailors, but the zoo suitors and the police were being harassed, you know, by, by, by police, by Oakland police. And, um, yeah, this, this story right here was two Pachucos who got arrested in downtown Oakland for fighting with sailors in 1943. This is also another zoo suit riot that happened on Telegraph in downtown Oakland. And I have more information about this stuff. And if you look down, I have a video called The History of Pachucos and Zoo Suits in Oakland and the Bay Area. Now, these Zoo Suit gangs were all over the Bay Area at the time, not just Oakland. They had them in Oakland, in Dakota, in Hayward, in Richmond, in Vallejo, in San Jose, in San Francisco. And wherever there was rust on the Bay, you had these Zoo Suit gangs. The only documented Zoo Suit gang that I heard about was called the 21st Ave Gang. And that was the East Oakland gang on 20, I mean the 23rd Ave gang. That was the East Oakland gang on 23rd Ave over there by Quince. And that's probably the precursor to the, to the gang that late came later on called Quince or East 15th, even by the San Antonio Park. Obviously they had Pachucos in Jingletown and they also had Pachucos in West Oakland. You know what I mean? Because the old barrio used to be in West Oakland. And, uh, yeah, that's where a lot of Mexicanos used to live. But there were some that lived in East Oakland as well, in the Fruitvale, Jingletown, and the Doves, and in the Deep East. But, you know, you got to remember, at this time, most of uh, East Oakland was white. You know what I mean? But uh, in the 1940s, 
there was a Pachucos, there was a lot of raids on Pachucos. Like I said, this this right here was a raid on Pachucos where they arrested Pachucos in 1949 all over Oakland for robberies and assaults and different things. There was a war on the Pachuco gangs. So, as you can see, the precursor of the modern day gangs in Oakland go back to the Pachucos just like they did in L.A. So, it, it wasn't just an L.A. thing. It was happening here in the Bay Area as well. Now, a lot of people might not know their history, but the West Oakland Barrio that used to exist got destroyed in the 19, late 1950s, 1960s during the urban renewal era. You know, there was... Um, they built the 880 freeway, the BART, the post office in West Oakland, and various other things, the Acorn Projects, and they destroyed most of the old barrios and the old hoods in Oakland. And that right there pushed a lot of raza into East Oakland, uh, and blacks as well, because uh, there was a mass migration of black people and Chicanos into East Oakland. The Chicanos settled a lot around Fruitvale, around Jingletown, around um, the Doves, around uh over there by 7th and East 12 like in that area you know and in the 50s and the 60s as well so you started having Rasa congregate in in East Oakland and you started having in the 60s the Chicano movement you know what I mean but uh in the 50s and 60s the Pachucos were called the Hondos now I'm not sure why they call them that a uh, friend Juan Espinosa told me that there was um <clears throat> there was they called the blacks the bloods they called the uh the white boys the surfer boys and they called the chicanos or the pachucos the hondos so in oakland for, for whatever reason they called the chicanos or the the pachucos hondos and i've heard that from ogs from veteranos from that era who've told me about it so it is true and uh, like i said in in east oakland during the 60s the Pachuco, the, the Chicano movement started happening. The Brown Berets, the Chicano Revolutionary Party, you know, the Chicano Moratorium, which was a protest against the Vietnam War, and various other things started happening, as well as the Black Panthers in West Oakland who were fighting against police brutality. The same thing was happening in the Chicano Barrios, and a lot of people gravitated towards that, and a lot of the gangbang stuff started to die off, a lot of the Pachuco stuff from the past. And, um, yeah, the Chicano movement was a time when a lot of youngsters were fighting for their rights, fighting against police brutality and various other things. And, uh, obviously that movement was destroyed by a lot of infiltration by COINTELPRO. And also there was a big flooding of heroin in the black and brown neighborhoods of Oakland. And that's when we get into the 70s, the new era of what they call the Cholo era. You know what I mean? And what were the Cholos? Well, the Cholos were were the modern version of the uh, of the uh, Pachucos. You know what I mean? Now, instead of wearing zoo suits and, and stuff like that, they were wearing khakis. They were wearing flipped up hats. They were wearing winos, Stacey Adams, Ben Davis. You know what I mean? Pendletons, white t-shirts, derby jackets. That became the style. You know what I mean? The Cholo style. And the Cholo style was pretty big with Chicanos in Oakland. People forget about that. I know a lot of people try to say that Oakland people try to act like they're black and blah, blah, blah. But in the 70s and 80s, Chicanos gravitated to the Cholo style big time in Oakland. And uh, you started having a lot of Cholo gangs. You know, one of the first was Carlos Hermanos del Barrio. And um, others started forming like 41st Cycles, East 15th or 15th, San Antonio Park. You know, Jingle Town, Barrio Oakland Locals, and various others that started forming around Oakland. And, you know, there was warfare between a lot of these hoods, a lot of these gangs were fighting. But the, the gang called Hermanos del Barrio, which was started by a guy named Carlos Parkin, became Barrio 60s, or the 60s, which was a gang of brothers who formed the gang in the 60s, on 65th. And this gang became one of the large, larger Chicano gangs at the time. And uh, they kind of dominated the scene as far as Chicano hoods. And uh, they made so much noise at the time that they actually made a PBS documentary, Bill Jersey, called Children of Violence. And this this was about the, the 60s, and it chronicled the Parkin family, which was a family from, from Texas that migrated to Oakland. Like I said, a lot of people from Texas 
and New Mexico migrated to Oakland at the time. And, uh, yeah, that was Carlos Quarkin was this guy, him and his brother, Dancing Dan, and a few others, um, formed the 60s gang. That's Mama Lee. She was one of the members of the 60s, and this is part of the documentary. That's on 65th and, uh, and East 14th. And, uh, yeah, this documentary was made about the 60s. Apparently, in the documentary, they were fighting against a Filipino gang, it seems like. You know what I mean? I, I don't know too much info about what the Filipino gangs were like at the time, but it looks like the, they had funk with the Filipino gangs, and they also had funk with 41st Cycles from 41st Ave. You know what I mean? But the documentary was one of the rare... It's a gem. I call it a rare gem because it was made in 1982, and it was one of the rare looks at Chicano life in Oakland. You know what I mean? And the thing that's crazy about the 60s is they coexisted at the same time that the uh, Felix Mitchell was at the 6-9 Ville and 6 5 Ville right down the street. You know what I mean? So Barrio 60s and Felix Mitchell's crew co coexisted with each other around the same time. And, uh, you know, this documentary showed the trials and tribulation of this familia, you know, of what they were going through, you know, and uh, yeah, man. At, even at that time, Oakland was already already wild. There was a lot of homies getting killed, a lot of fools on drugs, a lot of fools selling dope, and doing different things. And you know, the the, the whole Cholo era was the beginning uh, of of the way things you know the way things got wild. You know, because fools started packing, fools started having guns, and 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 the game was changing. It wasn't no longer just fights and knives. You know what I mean? It was getting more serious. But yeah, this that's the homies from the sixties right there. You know, Carlos Parkin and the other homies from that barrio. But this, this made way into the 80s. And this is the era of my brother's era. You know what I mean? These are the homies from 36 Locals. There's Bean, Carlos Parkin, and his brother Dancing Dan. That's Frank from 36. That's Twinkie from the 60s. I don't know who that homie is. But yeah, man, the 80s was, was a crazy time. It was the crack era. You know what I mean? A lot of people started doing crack. A lot of the homies started smoking KJ or that PCP stuff. A lot of dudes were selling dope. A lot of fools were doing dope. And it was it was a crazy time, man. It was when the gunplay started. But one thing about the time, there wasn't a lot of the, the North and Sioux stuff. It was barely starting to come in. But it wasn't so prevalent. Now, this is from another movie called The Principal, which was made in 1987 in East Oakland. And the movie was about a principal who came to clean up a bad school, you know what I mean? And as you can see, that's the homie from 38 Big Surge, that's Isai Morales, that's Jacob Vargas, and that's some of the homies from, from the 30s, from 38th Street, 38th Ave. If you can see, it says 38X4 in the back. And some, some cliques were starting to rep Norte, but it wasn't like the way it would be in the 90s. Like, I don't remember too many dudes talking about, I'm a Norteño and, and red and blue. It wasn't really about that back then. It was more about your barrio. And you started having different barrios. You know, you started having the new hoods. Like, uh, you started having 38, 38th Ave locals. This is the homies from 38. You started having 36 locals. You started having, uh, obviously, 41st, East 15th. You started having 46 locals. Uh, 96th Ave locals in the Deep East. They were actually Norteños. You started having Wino Park, which was actually a, a Mexicano or what you would call a Paisa gang. But they actually weren't Sureños or Border Brothers. They were Norteños originally. You know what I mean? And Wino Park was over there in Funk, by Funk Town, you know, by, by 7th and, uh, and East 12th by the old Plaza Theater. Like I said, these are the homies from, from 38. That's my, that's my brother and his homies from 36. You know what I mean? So this was the era of the Cholos, of, of, of the homies, you know what I mean? This is back when fools had low riders. This is back when dudes used to cruise on East 14th or cruise at the at the estuary or kick it at the Jack in the Box and the Doves. You know what I mean? There was fights between different hoods. Like my brother told me back then they used to get into fights with with some black dudes called Scourgeville and Fruitvale Gangsters and East 15th and even Jingletown. And, uh, yeah, man, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't so much about the North and Sud. It was more about, you know, different barrios, different hoods. And, but, you know, this is the era when it started getting crazy, when gunplay started happening. You know, this is around 86, 87, 88, 89. And, uh, yeah, man, 
they started, it just started getting crazier. A lot of homies started getting killed. A lot of homies started going to jail. And that era made way for the 90s. And the 90s was a completely, totally different era from the previous era. Because there was a new element. An element that a lot of people weren't expecting, man. And we go into the 1990s. Now, this article is from 1992. That's on East 7th Street. That's the homie from Fruitvale. And, um, you know, this is when the Norteño and Sur stuff started really hitting the streets and the Border Brothers stuff. Now, there weren't too many Sureños in Oakland at the time. But you did start having a gang called the Border Brothers. And the Border Brothers, from what I learned, started in Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, I forget the name of the dude who started it, but it started somewhere around, like, the late 80s. And it gravitated towards Oakland, you know what I mean? And they formed a gang in the Deep East, in Deep East Oakland. And, you know, the the, the early 90s, if you know your Oakland history, was one of the most violent eras in Oakland's history. The blacks started fighting hardcore over drugs, you know what I mean, over the drug control of, of the crack but then the Chicanos started going to war over Border Brothers, Norte, and Sur. And it was just a freaking war. And people were getting killed left and right. 90, 1992 and 1993 and 1991 were some of the most deadliest eras of Oakland's history. And a lot of homies got killed and a lot of homies got, um, got thrown in jail. Now the Norte thing hit Oakland hard because a lot of homies in the 80s started going to the Pinta and they got laced up on the whole North and South thing. And they started bringing it back to the streets. Like I said, it was around in the 90s, in the 80s. But it wasn't so prevalent like it was in the 90s. Now, the 90s was hardcore. Especially the war between the BBs and, and the Norteños. And, you know, the older barrios started um, forming Norteño cliques. You know what I mean? Like uh, 36, 38. Fruitvale Gangsters, East 7th Street, uh, Quince, uh, 41st, and uh, a few others, you know what I mean, started claiming Norte. Now they were Norteños. And then you started having newer cliques like Mitchell Street Locals. You started having um, 54th Locals. The 60s became a new gang called the 6th, the, the UNT, you know what I mean? At first they were, they were like Norteños wearing green rags. But eventually they became full-on Norteños. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, man, it was just a war on the streets, man. Homies were getting killed left and right, going to jail. I missed a part of that era because I moved to Sacramento. But I knew a lot of homies that got caught up. I came back to Oakland in 95. And uh, yeah, man, it was it was a crazy time. It was a wild time, I could say. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, so like I said, the Border Brothers was the clique, and these are some homies from the Border Brothers, was a clique that started in, 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 in Tijuana and it migrated to Mexico. I mean, it migrated from Mexico to Oakland in the in the late 80s, early 90s. And yeah, man, it became a force to be reckoned with. Another thing you started having in, in Oakland was stuff like this, especially around the time when G.U.N. came out. This is the late 90s I'm talking about now. You know, G.U.N., 17 Reasons, there was a big push to, uh, and you could look this up on YouTube. There's plenty of videos on these subjects. But there was a big push to stop red on red crime or norte on norte crime. Like that, there could be more unity amongst Norteño gangs and they could fight against the Sureño and Border Brother gangs. So you started having unity gangs like, um, like, uh, Oakland Norteño Riders. You feel me? And, uh, and, uh, La Familia del Norte. These were the homies from Quince and, and from 38, 36, you know, and Fruitvale Gangsters kicking, kicking it together. And this is when you started having unity because, like I said, back in the early 90s, late 80s, a lot of the Norteño cliques or the older cliques used to fight amongst each other. You feel me? And, um, yeah, it, it was a, it was a, it was a crazy time. I think by the late 90s, it had calmed down a little bit. It wasn't as bad as it was in the early 90s. But it would get crazy again. You know what I mean? It would get crazy again. And these are the homies from Mitchell Street. That's another one of the cliques that formed during that era. Big Joe, may he rest in peace. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of homies that got killed during that era. It was a sad time, man. It was a really sad time. But, um, yeah, you started having, like I said, you, 
you started having the 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 Norte Sur and Border Brothers. And one thing is the Sureños started coming into Oakland in the late nineties. You know what I mean? Like I said before, there had been Sureños, but there had been a few, not very many. According to what my brother told me, he, he told me there had been a few. There were more Border Brothers than there were Sureños. But in the in the nineties, you started having um. You started having Sureños coming in, and uh, they were called SSL, and they started forming around uh, around the mid '90s, around 57th Ave, around 51st Ave. Back in those days, 52nd Ave. That was kind of like their little area where they used to kick it with. These are the Border Brothers. I think this is DFL. Now the Border Brothers got big enough, and they they started dominating the Deep East. Let's. That, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but. The Border Brothers started dominating the Deep East. So they started on 94th Ave, and then they took over 98th Ave. They took over 95th Ave, 93rd, 90th, you know, all the way down to about 81st, 82nd. Even in the 70s, there was Border Brothers, and they became pretty deep in that area. And if you were a Norteño and you got caught in a Border Brother territory, it was all bad. Now, we're going to go into a, into the, the era that came after the Border Brothers. And after the, 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 the Border Brothers, I'm messing up here. After the 90s, you know what I mean? So now you go into the 2000s. And the 2000s was completely different from the 90s, from the 80s, from the 70s, even from the 40s. The, the 2000s, you started having the hyphy movement. And the game changed. A lot of dudes stopped dressing cholo. A lot of dudes started embracing more of the urban thing. Even though some homies were already embracing it in the late 90s, it started being embraced even more during this era. The gold grills, the shake your dregs, long hair, rolling scrapers. Now it wasn't lowriders no more. It was like scrapers and, 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 and going to side shows. And the whole high feed movement happened. And this was about 2010. This is between 2000, about 2003 to about 2010 was the Hyphy era. And, um, yeah, man, that brought a new war to Oakland. Now, the Border Brothers in 2003, 2004, I'm sorry, went to war with the Sudanians after a funeral in Hayward where some SSL Sudanians from Oakland were having a funeral, and some Border Brothers were having a funeral, and they got into a fight and a shootout at the cemetery in Hayward, and it trickled over to the streets of Oakland where Sudanios and Border Brothers started shooting each other. There's actually videos on that on that subject that you can look up, but it was a pretty crazy time, man. Besides that, the Border Brothers, Sudanios, and Nortenios were all going to war over control of the, of the territories, and it had gotten so crazy that a documentary called Gang Wars was made. And this documented, you know, the war between the Border Brothers, Norteños, and Sureños. Now, some might say the documentary was fake, it was overhyped. But that era was really violent in Oakland. And a lot of young homies got killed during that era. So that era was no joke, man. And um, there was some truth to that documentary. That's the 7th and Derby. The homies right there playing with the uh, with the fire hydrants. But, um, yeah, that era was really violent, you know what I mean? And, and a lot of young homies got killed, man. They're, they're, the, high, the homicide rate was ridiculously high at that time, you know what I mean? And, you know, that pretty much came about between 2000, like I said, 3 to about 2010. It was just like mayhem and murder on the streets. And a lot of young homies got killed, man. And it was, a, it was a sad time, you know, because a lot of youngsters from that hyphy era were murdered. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the big time ballers. There were Chicanos in Oakland that we know about. You know, Fat Tone, which I made a video about him. He was from Jingle Town. And he, and this, that was Antonio de Leon and his brother Goyo de Leon. You know what I mean? They controlled Jingle Town. They were the suppliers for the dope for a lot of the black drug dealers, but they also were supplying and using the Border Brothers as well. Some say that, that Fat Tone was one of the ones that brought the Border Brothers to Oakland, which is, I'm not 100% sure about that, but 
I know that he was affiliated to them. And, uh, yeah, man, Factone was a big factor in the town. I knew him, I knew him. My brothers knew him, like I said before. And then you had this, this homie. Ah, oh, come on, man. What happened here? Give me a second. You had the other homie who was from the town. You had Mexican Mike, or Mike Moniz, at Eminem. And Mexican Mike was from the deep, from 98th and D Street. And uh, he was also a big-time drug dealer. He was affiliated with the Nuestra Raza and the Nuestra Familia. You could check out Rojo's video of Convict's Perspective. He was a huge factor in Oakland. He had a bar in San Leandro called Big C's Bar, which my brother told me he hung out a few times. And, uh, yeah, Mexican Mike was a huge factor who had connections with blacks, with Norteños, with Samoans, Tongans. And, uh, yeah, man, he was murdered in... 2000, 2001 in Brookfield, and uh, Factone was murdered in 1996. So as you can see, even the Norteños and the Border Brothers had big time, you know what I mean, ballers, drug dealers. And uh, yeah, man, that's basically the history of the gangs in Oakland or the barrios in Oakland. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to share it. Feel free to tell your friends about it. And, uh, man, like I said, don't live this lifestyle. After 2010, like I said before in the old video, I don't know too much about who's active now or who, what happened after that. You know what I mean? I heard that there's still some gangs that are active out there, but I don't know which ones or who's out there. It's a whole new generation, you feel me? But at least I could tell you what I remember seeing and living through. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. This is Jose with Oakland Latinos United. Out.